And I went to the island and we found out that there was some issues with wash. And there was issues with NCDs, speci specifically amongst the women. To get to Viwa, you had to get off on the other side of the island. And you had to walk up a flight of steps that I, I guess was at least 100 steps. And then you had to walk along the footpath and walk down the steps. So I encouraged the women and said, look, the next time I'm going to come and uh, we're going to commission your, your wash project that we have decided we're going to do together. I'd like you, every three o'clock in the afternoon, as that boat comes across from Bow Island bringing the kids, you, the grandmothers, are waiting for them, and you walk them back. And so they started then. And I think we need to find mechanisms by which we do things communally. But two villages <coughs> up on the coral coast, my mom's around from around that area, so we have some relations. Same challenges, NCDs, same challenges, big communal, uh, community hall, uh, big studio. And I said to them, why don't you do Zumba? So they started that. Every three o'clock in the afternoon was Zumba for all the women in the village. And I hope that this stakeholder meeting will not only talk about one of the simple messages, but also one of the things we can do communally. Because for every person that does his own walk on Albert Park, every morning or in the afternoon, there are many who cannot afford them. There are many mothers who cannot live home. So one of the things that we can do communally is part of intervention. The development of our new strategic plan for wellness and NCDs and the wellness center will be part of the important contributions to leveraging expertise, experience, and multi-sectoral action. There's been significant movement also on the world stage. WHO in 2000 adopted resolution 53.17 on the WHO Global Strategy on NCTs. In 2013, the World Health Assembly endorsed WHO Global Action 2013 to 2020. And also the United Nations General Assembly in 2011 adopted the first political declaration on prevention of NCTs. During this COVID-19 pandemic, not only us, but all around the world, we realized the importance of having to deal effectively with all our normative challenges. And NCD is an important part of the normative challenge. In a meeting in WHO before COVID-19 came, when we went across, one of my colleagues, a fellow minister from, from one of the African nations, which I shall not name. He came and he said to me, my brother, we're facing the octopugal or pentacrural of disease, not a double burden, not a triple burden. So I said, what do you mean, my brother? He says, we have AIDS, we have malaria, we have Ebola, then we have NCT, and God forbid we have another virus, and we have COVID. Those are the challenges that some countries are facing. And that's why it is so important that we work hard on preventing NCD, but also on preventing other communicable diseases. Because the effect of communicable diseases on the health system will not allow us to be able to deal effectively with, with non-communicable diseases. Give an example. If there's a lot of acute febrile illnesses, the semester here is a surgery. And there's a lot of typhoid and leptospirosis and dengue in the hospital. Semasa, despite being a very good plastic surgeon, will not be able to operate to do an elective list. They will not be able to do cancer treatment because it's based on the hospital beds. So that's why it's also important as part of the stakeholder consultation to ever think about what are the triple or quadruple burden of disease that we need to tackle with MCD because they have an effect on one another. We have the multi-sectoral governance, which is essential for health and development, and implementing health in all policies, a whole of government, a whole of society approach to NCDs. We want to set targets, develop and strengthen our collaborations, raise awareness, awareness in national public health burden, and that governance will allow us to give us the ability to provide adequate and sustained resources through domestic, bilateral, 
regional and multilateral channels. We want to be effective in that governance, inclusive in that governance, and we allow that governance to be strong and effective in protecting public health and city policies. I understand there is, in, there is an existing UNDP and WHO joint program focusing on the three main components of making a national investment case for addressing NCDs, enhancing national coordination, and strengthening municipal engagement in NCD. For our part, as a government, we put in place significant programs that are focused on reducing the burden of NCD in our people. Part of it is prevention, taxes on cigarettes and sugars, and sweet beverages have been in place for a number of years. In terms of treat treatment, the free medicine scheme, dialysis available in Nadara and the dialysis subsidy that we have. I'm thankful that we've been able to uh, change our cath lab in CWM and it's back working again. And also, you must have heard that Healthcare Fiji will soon be looking after Bailut Hospital. And one of the things that I expected of them is actually the high end uh, um, operations and in, uh, interventional in uh, cardiology. And a lot of other comprehensive outreach programs in the community. Over the next few days, your discussions are crucial on a multi sectoral approach. And I think you are all here showing the willingness to do it. And I want to share what I hope again will happen. And this is something that I've shared with Devina and with our management team. I sincerely hope that this that we will promote a health promoting society. We have 300, more than 300 schools that are health promoting schools. Over a thousand schools in Fiji. And I've talked to WHO and I've talked also to Koika in Japan that my wish is every school in Fiji will be health promoting. And in the last uh, WHO Western Pacific meeting, I raised that as, in, as something that we should try and align ourselves to. And it was accepted as something that the, the region should look towards. It is my hope that a family of four, I'll give you an example, father works in the police force, mother is a secretary at, uh, or a PA down at uh, RB Patel, children go to Suva Street, Maris, and they're from the, the Mosi, they're Catholics. This is my hope. That the mother works in a health promoting organization called RB Patel. The father works in a health promoting organization the Fiji Police Force, that the children go to a health promoting school, that when they go to church, their church is a health promoting church. When they visit the village in Amosi, their village is a health promoting community. And all these health promoting communities and churches and organizations and schools are intersecting in their messages. Because the more we tell the story, then the more likelihood we will have an impact. And by doing so, if the dad smokes cigarette, he will hear it from his workplace, he will hear it from his wife, he will hear it from his children, he will hear it from his church, he will hear it from the village, because the messages are intersecting. That is my wish. That is what I mean by a health-promoting whole of society approach.